There are two things that I've really come to appreciate in fly fishing. It's small streams and native fish. So we uh, found a stream here today. It's really small, but it's also supposed to have cutthroat in here, which is uh, one of the native fish here in Utah. For those of you who maybe are not familiar with the difference between a native and a wild fish, I'll give you a quick history lesson. Essentially the difference between a wild and a native fish is a wild fish was introduced to the stream at some point by people and they have since reproduced and maintained a population. So that's like browns, rainbows uh, throughout the west. And then you have native fish, which is fish that have been here since whenever they became a species. So cutthroat, for example, are native to the west. And then in the east, you've got the Appalachian brook trout. So I think it's always fun to target native fish because this is their natural habitat and where they've been for forever. <laughs> Blue wing, it's like a gray blue wing. Caddis up top. Let's try it. I think we're gonna be doing a lot of roll casting today. I just spooked it. So oh. That was a, such a big fish. Just right there. Wow. Oh, he denied it. There, it, oh gosh, there it was. Man. So I'm fishing solo for the first part of the day. And then my buddy Colby is gonna come up and meet me. He loves small streams just as much as I do. So we, uh, we should have a blast when, uh, when he links up. All right, I can see a bunch of fish right in front of this log here, just stacked up. I'm trying to be really low to make this cast count. Don't have much casting room, so it's gonna be a bit of a roll cast. Kidding me, first cast 
The branch. Come on. <laughs> Give me a break. Yep. And they spooked. Whoever says that small stream fishing is easy needs to needs to think twice on that statement. This is what we really needed right here. I didn't get to drink my whole coffee this morning. And we've been struggling. But hey, that's part of it, guys. That is part of it. There's this hole right here and I've already seen a couple just kind of cruising around. So I'm gonna sneak below them and see if I can't feed one of these guys. It might be kind of tricky with the cast, but we'll give it a go. There he is, yeah. Whew. 
munched it. Pretty little cut. Just hammered the purple haze, baby. These got these have to be some of the prettiest fish I think I've ever ever caught. There he is. <laughs> Another one. Hell yeah. Gosh, it's a really good fish. Oh my gosh. Man, look how pretty this is. So good. So I prepared a premium dish for us today. A good old peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Just absolutely fantastic. Mm. Colby should be joining me here in 30 minutes or so. There's no service up here, so I, I hope he's still coming. <laughs> I told him I'd be up here and he just looked for my car, so hopefully he can find it. Pressed. Little midday Joe. I'm about it. One thing I've noticed just being able to travel around and fish different areas of the country and see different rivers is, you know, there's a lot of like conservation message out there, which is really good, but sometimes it doesn't really click until you actually get out and you get to see these areas and you get to fish for certain types of fish. So I always think that, you know, fly fishermen like you and I and people who are enjoying and recreating in these areas are the ones that are actually going to care and actually going to try to take care of this resource. So wherever you are, I think it's important to get out and, you know, explore your area and get to know the environment, get to know the fishery and understand the fish. And I think when that happens, you start to have much deeper appreciation for fly fishing as a whole and just the places that you recreate. Made it. Hell yeah, dude. I just saw your text like a little bit ago. I was like, ah, I can't even text him back. No worries. <laughs> All right guys, Colby just arrived. Dude, what are you rigging up right now? Um, tell me the tell me the sauce right here. So this is my Moonlit Nirvana S Glass 3 weight. This is my go-to like small creek rod, mountain rod, 
Uh, just some good old glass. I'm gonna go, I think, double dry. Do super, super small parachute for a BWL and little tiny elk hair with some CDC on it. Fish the back end of it. I know there's gonna be three or four fish holding up in here. Probably fish the left. Yeah, probably maybe both sides of the seam up here. We are probably gonna work our way up. There's a good stretch of water that goes away from the road for a ways. So we're gonna go fish that. And uh, yeah, the sun's out so we can see a lot of these fish. So we're gonna see if we can't, see if we can't sight fish some of them. Oh. oh no. Oh. oh. Dude, there is a <laughs> a fly in the exact same spot that my fly is right now. Like, a millimeter away from my hook. Wow, let me grab your rod. Oh yeah, there he is. Oh. Nice. Dude, he chased it down, that was, that was yeah. sick. There we go. On the little Adams. Oh yeah. Beautiful cut. There it goes. Did you see that at all? Yeah, dude, it was that was, that was a good eat, man. That was, really that was cool. sweet. I feel like people often drive by these smaller creeks and not even think twice about stopping. From a glance, they really don't look like much. And I've even had people today come up to me asking me, are there actually fish in here? Like, are you, are you catching anything? And I totally get it. But when you get out here and you start working your way up the stream, you find a lot more than what you can see from the road. There it is. Oh, damn, that was a good one. Ah, oh, hey, the little guy. There's a, there's a lot of people that, oh, there we go. Oh, nice. There's a lot of people that it's just not their jam and that's cool. Like I love catching big trout at the same time, but this fish is probably prettier than any like 30 inch trout that I've ever seen. And it's every fish out here is like that. such a complex ecosystem that's just thriving with bug life, thriving with animal life, and you know, tucked away in these little holes are these beautiful native cutthroat. Brown trout are awesome. Even rainbows aren't technically native. And uh, these little native trout are just like, it, it gives you a little bit of a connection to fishing that you don't get from a lot of other species. 
and I think it really adds that next level of fun factor to me. I've been fortunate to go on some pretty cool trips over the years and get to chase some big fish, but even then, I've always found myself just coming back to these, these little creeks and they've always kept me curious, so gotta love it. I guess you always know.